All right, you got your Bible, go book of John, please. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. John 13, verse 18. All right, so he just got through talking about how uh, he says, if you serve another, you're going to be happy. Yeah. And you will. You'll be happy you serve one another, amen. There's something special about serving, amen. You be happy when you give. The most miserable lot is the ungiving people. Is the people that don't serve other people. That's the ones that are miserable. They don't serve. They're too busy trying to get everybody to serve them. And so you want to be happy, you serve. Then verse number 18. I speak, he goes on, he says about being happy. I speak not of you all. I know whom I've chosen. But that the scripture might may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me had lifted up his heel against me. Isn't that something? And he says, he says, I'm not speaking all of you. All of you can't be happy like this. I'll tell you why. Because there's one of you here, you're against me. And he's, he's already lifted his heel up. I mean, he even eats bread with me. Look what happens. He goes on. Verse number uh, uh, 19. Now I tell you before it come to come. That when it come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Aren't you glad that the Bible prophesies? Amen. I'm glad the Bible prophesies the future. I don't have to doubt the book. Yeah. The book always tells me the future and gets it right every time. I look at that and say, blessed be God. I've got a book, amen, that come from God, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And either receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. You know what you did on, on uh, uh, last, I think it was what, last time when we gave that offering to Miguel? You gave that to Jesus. Yeah. You gave that to Jesus, amen. You were a blessing and you bought Jesus Christ. You're going to help by Jesus Christ a car. What a blessing, amen. What a wonderful thing. He said, you receive, receive them, you receive me. You're a blessing to them, you're a blessing to me, he said. Amen. You want to serve the Lord, you want to be a blessing to the Lord. Hey, be a blessing to one another, amen. Right. That's how you do it. And he goes on, verse number 21, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit. I like that passage. You know why? Did Jesus Christ sin? No sin. He didn't sin. But he's troubled in spirit. You know what that tells me? Being troubled in spirit is not a sin. I get a bit troubled in my spirit sometimes. How many of you get troubled in your spirit? I do, amen. I'm glad that's not a sin, amen. And I'm glad that he knows what it's like to be troubled in spirit. And he can help me, amen. Yeah. It says this, this verse, when Jesus had th said thus, had, had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Betrayal is a terrible thing, isn't it? Betrayal is a terrible thing. Here's a man, he's, why he's troubled. He's like any human being. He's like any man because he was a man. He's put all of his heart, all of his life for three and a half years into these guys. And one of them's a traitor. One of them's going to betray him. And he's troubled about it. He already knows that this bloke's going to betray him. And it makes him troubled. Have you ever been betrayed? Have you ever given and given and given and the person that you give and give to that you love, it, that actually it's going to betray you? Has that ever happened to you? There's nothing that hurts worse than somebody you love betraying you. Somebody talk about you on the streets, they talk about me, they say things, I don't really. This. But when it's my brother, my sister, the one I ate with, the one I drank with, the one we went to the house of God together. Amen. When family who you love and you care about and you're giving all you to them and then they turn on you. Man, that's, that's the, the worst hurt that I've ever had is when somebody of my own blood turned against me. Betrays trouble because he's betrayed. He knows he's going to betray him. Listen, brothers and sisters, it's important. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Don't betray your family. Don't betray your mates. Don't betray your God. Amen. And don't betray your church. Amen. But anyway, so he's troubled. And, he's, and he says, when are you going to betray me? This bloke, he's, he's here with me. He's going to betray me. It bothers him. Look, he says in verse number uh, 
20, uh, 21. When Jesus had thus said, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Who is it? Which one of you is going to betray Jesus this week? Who is it? Who is it? They're looking on one another. <laughs> Who is it? Look what happens. They don't, they don't know who it is. Now, you know that tells me several things. Who's the, who's, who is the one that's going to be the traitor? It's Judas, right? Yeah. And no one suspects him to be the traitor. No one suspects him. He probably, matter of fact, he was the one that took care of the money. So he would have been one that everybody thought was really respectable. Right? Yeah. Sometimes. So you know what you're learning is this. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And sometimes you can look on the outside and see all these things. That doesn't mean anything. What's the heart like? Now I'll give you something here. Thou and thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. So it's really hard to know who's the traitor. I mean, it's really hard. Because we don't know hearts. You don't know heart. I don't know heart. Really, God's the only one that knows the hearts. Amen. Right? And he goes on, the trouble of spirit, and they begin to doubt. So who is it? Verse 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Peter, ask him. Ask him, John. This is John, by the way. And then lying on Jesus' breast, sorry, he then lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Now, let me give you a story here. We have seen so many pictures, not a story, but let me see, give you some ideas here. We've seen so many pictures of the Lord's Supper. It's messed our mind up. It's messed our mind up. You know what you see as the Lord's Supper? You always see this. I'm going to use her because I don't want to lean on anybody else. <laughs> You always see this. That's how John is. Like this. I'm going to tell you that almost looks queerish. Why do you think it was like that? Because the paintings. Now you know what it's like? This is what it's like. Jesus is troubled in spirit. And John says, mate, you all right, mate? Come on, man, you all right? So we're here for you, mate. We're here. Like any brothers would do. He wasn't leaning the whole time on Jesus' breast. <laughs> yeah. It's a mate. The other day I, I, I went to see Brother Rod. And Brother Rod, I was worried about him, to be quite frank with you. And, uh, and he saw my worry. He grabbed me and hugged me. Amen. Put his head here. I saw, you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't let those pictures or ruin your mind. Yes, They'll mess you up. Yep. Like people think about Jesus, what he looks like. That's why it's not good to make pictures like that. Amen. It's not good to make pictures like that. It messes your mind up. God said not to even do it. He says not to make any images on this stuff. God said don't do that because it'll mess your mind up. You'll be thinking something's a certain way. And it might not be anything like that. Yep. And so you got to learn to think about that. But anyway, he's leaning on his bosom. Anyway, so he is, says, leaning on his bosom, said, who is it? Jesus answered, he it is. Let me show you something. We're going to stop here. He it is, to whom I shall give a sop, whom I have dipped it, when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. I'm going to show you something neat in the Bible real quickly. I didn't come with this. Somebody else come with this, but Sop, S O P, son of perdition. Son of perdition. Bible calls him a devil. Something interesting. What chapter are we in? What verse are we in? Verse 26. 
13 plus 13. How many letters is in his name? 13. He's a rebel. His problem, he's a rebel. And God is showing you that this guy is a rebel, and that's his problem. He can't take any kind of authority over him, and so he rebels against God, because how dare God, Jesus Christ, tell him he did wrong about that thing, and he goes against the Lord. He's a rebel. He's a devil. He's a son of perdition. So he's connected to. Bible's amazing, isn't it? All right, let's go Lord in prayer.